all recognizable player names. I think the best way to, 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 to go about this is you got you got sweet light guys over here. Don't, this is somewhat of, a, of an old school ready for a miracle team. Ready for a miracle, especially earlier on in the season. They were definitely known as a powerful team. Things kind of fell off a little bit. I think they've been bouncing back and forth between that gold and diamond division for the most part. Obviously a little bit of a name change here. I don't think it's the exact same roster by any means, but they definitely have several players. Adriel Balchazar spell definitely coming. I believe Masser as well, so I believe maybe the only one different player here as far as the roster is concerned. Anyways, definitely a legitimate team here in the Diamond Division. On the other side, Willow Keeper. Again, kind of that same idea. Just a team that's been bouncing back and forth between that gold and diamond tier. And uh, here they are now. Going to get them some exposure here on what is Psycho number 10 to finish things off. Now, um, both of these teams, I believe, and I'm going to actually, I want to actually double check this as, oh, I guess I cannot, unfortunately. Uh, the standings look like they're having some issues right now. But anyways, both of these teams, I believe, are on the, uh, are, you need to be top 17, it is. If, if you're a top 17 team, you qualify for the brackets, or the playoffs, I should say, uh, when it comes down to it. And I believe both of these teams are in that mark there. Uh, I believe 10 through 17, even somewhere in that area. So, uh, that's obviously uh, a big, important thing for these two teams, and uh, a good finish here in cycle 10 will help them advance on, to say the least, going on in the playoff stages. Anyways, taking a closer look now at this matchup here. Let's kind of look at what the hell is going on. We got the banning stage initially, of course, coming out. Uh, we were looking at, well, what do we got? Scout, Pestilence, Warbeast, Keeper of the Forest. Wretched Hag going to be that first pick. Ophelia the follow-up. Rhapsody into Bubbles. Tempest into Torture. So we got the Rhapsody once again. It's I don't, I don't really know if there's much more to say about this hero when it comes down to it. Rhapsody has just really exploded onto the competitive scene as far as a go-to support in these last weeks here. She really is arguably a top tier support, a the top tier support right now on uh, the competitive scene. It just fits the play style. She's a great replacement for Engineer after those nerfs in terms of the laning phase, uh, what she brings to the table, what that staccato's done. Obviously, the Disco Inferno, a very, very powerful tool for all throughout the game, especially early on for that pushing and whatnot. And then her ultimate, I mean, it, it's. It, it, I really don't need to say much more than that. Her ultimate, Protective Melody, it's an amazing ability. Even if you get it off for a half a second, it can do wonders for you, stopping that initial burst or stopping the burst points throughout those fights. So it it really does make sense that we are seeing her all of a sudden, but it is kind of curious how it took so long uh, to kind of get her back on the competitive scene. But that's how it happens. That's how it happens with a lot of these heroes, obviously, when it comes down to it. But to say the least, again, Willow Keeper, they're picking up Rhapsody over here with that Wretched Hack Tempest, so a strong start for them. Again, Ice, uh, Sweet Like Ice, also looking pretty strong here with that Bubbles Torture Ophelia. The next tier of pants kind of interesting. We have the Ravener, Kraken, Grinix, Berserker, Cersei, and Drunken Master. And then Pebbles is going to be coming out here uh, for the Legion team. So uh, Pebbles, uh, obviously for, uh, for for Willow Keeper here again. Pebbles has kind of been one of those cases recently. It seems like teams are still are on that uh, that that teeter totter point of is he still a hero that we want to go for here? Is he still a go to burst hero that we want to pick up a ganking hero, or are we going to go elsewhere? We've been seeing heroes like Moraxis come up recently. Gaul has been played here and there. There's definitely been these middle heroes that are these heroes that fit that same role that have been coming back once again and and taking the spot to an extent of Pebbles. So still going to be ran here by Willow Keeper and obviously still a great hero, or still powerfully I should say. We'll see how it works out here. Uh, for this team. Now back over to Sweet Light Guys. Not too much time remaining. Only about 10 seconds here. So it's going to be interesting to see how they look to pick up with their fourth pick up here. Uh, right now, maybe expecting the torture to be more of that support yeah, option. Well. Master of Farms, though, picked up. But look at that. Yeah. Snap pick Kronos to finish things off for Willow Keeper. They didn't care that they had 46 seconds of extra time. They didn't care what Ice picked up. They were going Kronos all the way. How about that? How about that? That is interesting. Kronos, the final pick, coming out here by Willow Keeper. And uh, that's how things are going to finish off. So now things just got really interesting as far as what we'll possibly see. Um, the laning phase, I think it's kind of straightforward here. You got Tempest Jungle, Kronos the short lane, Wretched Dag in that suicide rule, then Pebbles Rhapsody for the middle. But uh, not too often we see a Kronos. Melee carries in general. Not the most uh, popular pickups as of recent when it comes down to it. But, hey, we saw Dark Lady yesterday in the hands of Nox on Upper Team X. It performed very well. We got Kronos here. Probably in the hands of Marcus Moy here for Willow Keeper. 
Again, excited to see what he brings to the table. Not a hero we see often, so that is cool to see. Ah, going to be in boxy, it looks like. Slither, by the way, of course, the final pick coming out here for uh, for Sweet Light guys. So, again, still kind of curious as far as what we're ultimately going to see as far as laning presence here. Um, if I had to guess, I would think it's going to be the Master of Arms Torture mid. They're going to probably make the Master of Arms more of that priority farm here. Uh, being played by Masera. As, uh, yeah, Adriel's the one on Torture. You got Slither for that short lane. Bubbles, of course, Suicide. And Ophelia in the jungle. In fact, I would not be surprised. It's definitely seen aggressive trail lane coming out here from our Hellborn side. So let me go ahead and switch the interface real quickly and again, make sure I actually switch the in game. I had a little bit of a hiccup yesterday uh, when it came down to it. But uh, I think I think we're good here. I think we're good here. That was, uh, <laughs> that was fun times yesterday. Not really, I know. It's probably pretty frustrating as a spectator. How <laughs> I'm sitting here casting the game, and you're all looking at a versus screen. But anyways, enough about the past. Enough about the past. Here we are in uh, what is game number one, of course, the Sweet Like Ice versus Willow Keeper. So obviously these awards going down initially. Atro going to place down the ward side up top here and get some good vision. Kronos actually going very aggressive here. Interesting strategy. Are they going to be looking to run a Suicide Kronos almost? I mean, now I'm very interested to see what's going to be going on. In fact, Boxy, he, does have to, or he doesn't have time leap yet, but he could level it up if need be. Not going to be able to chase him down, though, so he's going to be fine. But it looks like we are going to see a Suicide Kronos. Wretched Hag is going to lane out mid. A Rhapsody Pebbles bottom. Okay, so I guess the lanes weren't as straightforward as I expected them to be. Holy crap. Talk about going outside of the box here. For uh, for Willow Keeper or by Willow Keeper even, I mean we're we're definitely known you know Jonas fan obviously known as uh, as of lately very creative kind of suicide player in terms of what heroes he picks up he's definitely he's noted for bringing Grinix on the scene of course and uh, corrupt a disciple every now and then the succubus we've seen we've definitely seen some different style of suicide heroes played by him. Boxy trying to kind of fit that tradition, going the Chrono Suicide. Now, I mean, when you think of the idea here, with that time leap, obviously has a great getaway tool uh, in the time leap. I'm sure Rewind could definitely be a, a decent as well if he decides to level that up as far as not getting killed. And But, I mean, it, it is a Slither matchup. Slither, of course, uh, one of the stronger 1v1 laners in the game. So, to say the least, I, I would expect Slither to still have a good time here at the top lane. But with that said, Chronos definitely could stay alive and eventually... Uh, evolve throughout the game. It is going to be interesting to see how that ultimately occurs for him as Bubbles at the bottom lane is going to be able to shield surf away but forced to use the health potion right off the bat. So, yeah, I wonder what, what's going through the minds of Sweet Like Ice right now, seeing uh, uh, how the lanes are set up. I mean, you got the Wretched Hat going solo mid. Again, I thought they were pretty straightforward. I'm sure they might have thought that too, but definitely a little bit different from what they expected. So, Bubbles all of a sudden finding himself in a 2v1 matchup here and is just being boxed out by Rhapsody, of course. You see, uh, Root of Z, going to do a good job of uh, putting those auto attacks in and throwing up that staccato. Bubbles, though, not going to let him fear too much, but uh, in the end, again, has to be a little bit careful as far as that decision making is concerned, but they're, they're continuing to go back at it, actually. In fact, Bubbles, oh, he has the Warlock helping him right here. I don't think he's going to get a kill, but he definitely gets Rhapsody pretty low to the point that she's actually going to activate her health potion, so good man mode coming out from Bubbles right there. Uh, here on the Hellborn side, but uh, again, you see this top lane matchup right here already. Kronos, he did do that creep pull initially, but things are probably going to start slowing down. It's expected. 8 and 2 Slither right now. 4 and 0 Kronos still sitting on. He does pick up the Iron Shield right here. He does go the Curse of Ages, too, uh, with his first level up. Again, I was kind of curious if we were maybe going to see more of a rewind. Um, but uh, with, the, with the extra harassment coming up from Slither, but no, he's going to go for the aggressive style build. In fact, look at this, applying a good pressure to Slither. But that's the thing, as soon as those auto attacks, uh, the stun wears off and the slow goes down, then all of a sudden he's the one that needs to be careful himself. So middle lane actually, Wretched Hag going in, picks off the crown courier. It might come at a cost though, yes, he's in a lot of trouble right here. And a bloodlust kill going to come out in favor of Sweet Light Guys. Masera actually going to pick it up. So don't think it was worth it in the end, but uh, Zloka wanted to make the big plays. And unfortunately, it definitely backfires right there. So, Master of Farms is like, ah, not a big deal. We got the uh, we got the Bloodlust kill. Torch is going to head back. Use the assist gold that he got, at least right there. And get a new courier, possibly even upgrade it at this point. To, not, to again, not really make it a big deal in the end for them. So, yeah, the decision making there from Zloka. He loves to see the man mode play coming out. But obviously, that did not work out in his favor when it was all said and done. But... 
Again, I'm still intrigued by this idea to send Kronos top because this whole landing phase here coming out from Willow Keeper, I mean, again, they could have done the conventional. The the Kronos bottom, you got your mid lane and Rhapsody Pebbles, and then you send that Suicide Wretched Hag uh, with the Tempest in the jungle. Definitely nothing wrong with that. In fact, speaking of Tempest, oh, the nice take cover coming out, but the Hasted Tempest is going to be able to chase down Bubbles, and Fusion will pick up the kill right there, so... Obviously, some great assistance coming out. Good job with the rune control. And that was actually a two-minute rune that uh, that was still there this whole time. Eventually, able to pick it up and chase down bubbles right there. So, Good job keeping uh, keeping taps on the rune control and obviously uh, setting up the kill. As a result of it, top lane, Kronos is going to drop pretty low right here. He does get the one level to rewind now to help himself a little bit against this heavy harassment. And actually, he's going to go in right here. He does have the time lane. Slither, though, going to run away. Kronos has a little bit of regen from the trees. There's a poison spray, but he gets the Curse of Ages attack. And down goes Slither. So he did the math, did Kronos. Boxy knew exactly what he needed. He had the attack ready to go for the Curse of Ages right there. And it does result in a kill. Great man mode coming out right there. So, again, we just talk about the lack of the man mode decision. Failing Wretched Hag. That man mode decision definitely helped Kronos big time. However, Ophelia's coming in. Kronos needs to be pretty careful right here. Oh, I feel he's going to show herself, though, so I think uh, I think he should be fine when it's all said and done. But that is a huge, huge kill for him. I mean, uh, you didn't see his GPM is not skyrocketing by any means. Only 256 gold per minute, but the fact that he's really locked down Slither now, only 230 GPM is damn impressive for, for him and uh, for the team's success. So that, that, again, is very, very good news. Uh, when it's all said and done, the big picture, you do got Master of Farms here, 430 gold per minute, obviously. Uh is uh, top of the charts, but Pebbles is looking at about 360 GPM in terms of uh, in terms of his farm here. So the uh, you, you, especially when you send a short lane Pebbles with that baby say you're definitely making a statement that you want to prioritize farm on him, of course, and get that early portal key ASAP to make uh, to make chaos happen. So they're going for that right here, Chronos top lane. In a little bit of trouble again. He does have time like as well as a Chronosphere if need be, but Torture comes out of nowhere. He is going to have to leap away, but he leaps right into Ophelia, and he is going to be picked off. Good timing right there. Great rotation, in fact, coming out from uh, Fitzbell especially to cut off Kronos and eventually set up the kill right there. So, well played. Coming out by the uh, the Hellborn side to cut him off. So now we're looking at a 2-2 two -two hero kill game. As far as uh, as far as the score goes, coming up to six minutes in though. Again, both teams definitely have their marks here. Um, Chronos, so you know, dropping back down about 200 GPM. So that kill was exciting and everything, but it's not like he has taken off. He all the, he actually picks up a bottle here. He still doesn't even have boots, which is is a little curious. I mean, he does have the time leap, obviously, for being able to uh, uh, get away in in most cases, unlike the last time we got cut off, but. At the same time, you know, not having the boots is, of course, going to mean he's going to need to rely on that time leap even that much more. But getting the bottle for the regen wants to be able to have that, you know, understandable as well. Granted, you know, he's not using the most mana other than the time leap, so I'm a little curious about that, but wants to be able to keep up against the Slither, of course. Now, Wretched Hag is kind of roaming up here as if they want to set up a gank, but... Don't know if uh, there's any successful ganks that are going to be happening. It's torture. You see him roaming around. Actually, another water cycle went down in the same spot here from Sweet Light Guys. Uh, not going to be counted, at least just yet. Bottom lane, uh, that's just an illusion, Rhapsody. But they are going to be looking to push it. You see uh, Tempest right here. He actually has a Ring of Sorcery coming on the way. He is level 7 as well. So, obviously, that ultimate going to be coming out here. Here come the Elementals, and this should be a free tower push. Bubbles is going to be here, maybe Shell Surf again to kind of clean things up. Tempest is Elementals. Okay, those weren't off. He's going to spawn some more right here. And uh, continue to push things in. Most likely, there we go. Takes one of the melee creeps. That Elemental is probably going to die. But again, uh, the Bubbles can't do much else right here. He's not level 6 either, so no Kelfield, no uh, surprise jumps going to be happening. We'll see if any TP start to come in, but I mean, looking at the... Uh, no, they don't have homecoming stones here, so yeah, definitely not going to be a homecoming stone for dance. Bubbles is doing a good job, though, of holding them off as much as possible here, and in fact, uh, as, as they're using a good amount of resources and time at the bottom lane, Master of Arms and Torture are going to counter push middle, so this isn't the worst case scenario for Sweet Light guys. They are eventually going to lose the tower, of course, but uh, definitely delayed it a little bit longer than perhaps expected there. 
So well played on their part, but in the end, kill does happen, of course, for Willowkeeper. And now you have uh, Pebbles who's looking at about 1660 gold saved up. So that portal key coming along. Granted, he only has a steam boot. So we do talk about this a lot how, you know, in cases like this, he, we do see a lot of time you want to at least maybe get something like a power supply here. Uh, even perhaps even something like a bottle just for the sake of the region and being able to not not be so reliant on getting that portal key, then comboing, and then having to go back to the wall to regen once again. So uh, we'll see if uh, it, it looks like he's going straight for the portal key is the point here. So. Uh, we'll see if that comes into play or not as far as the man is concerned. But uh, he is going to port to the top lane as you saw Ophelia and Slither pushing it. But they fall back immediately when they realize perhaps uh, there's people missing on the map. So going to play safer here. They could possibly think that he does have his portal key already. Wouldn't be too surprising uh, at about eight and a half, nine minutes into the game with the way he's been free farming down there. Again, he doesn't yet. But in the mind of Sweet Light guys, they, they may be under that assumption. So perhaps that's the reason for... A little bit more passive play here, coming out on their part. Yeah, I'm getting reports of uh, login issues, issue, or some login issues happening. Uh, not too sure what the deal is. I do know that uh, that the word has been passed along to the uh, the the S2 staff. What matters that uh, that are looking into it. So. Um, as far as, uh, I don't know if it's actually Han itself or the Han tour side of things or whatnot, but um, I, I, I can say that uh, people are looking into it and they are aware of it. So just a heads up on that. So if your match is delayed, if you're not able to join your lobby or whatnot, hopefully that should be getting fixed out here in the near future. We got our admins, obviously. Uh, I'm sure they'll keep you updated via old message chat and whatnot uh, when it's all said and done as well. So, uh, But uh, hey, we, got, we actually got this game started, so that's a cool thing, obviously, as far as the stream state goes. As Chrono's top lane, oh, he's going to be able to port away before he actually uh, gets jumped up here. So again, the power of that time lane, basically a blink style of ability. Able to go into the trees and easily escape uh, any kill attempt right there. So uh, Chrono's is level 8 right now. Again, he's had that Chrono's field, obviously, for a little bit right here. As far as uh, being able to set up some combo with that. Now perhaps get a big Chrono's field out into a Wretched Hag ultimate. Then maybe a Tempest follow-up or something like that. But... We'll see how that uh, comes out. Top tower, though, is eventually going to be pushed in. Slither, no wards needed. With the power of Ophelia and just his raw auto attack damage, more than enough to take out the tower right there. And as a result, Energizer is going to be picked up. In fact, look at Slither. I mean, his GPM wasn't the most impressive early game, especially since he got killed. But all of a sudden, he's skyrocketing. 380 gold per minute now as he has that early Energizer picked up. But we're not be surprised to see more of an icon of the Goddess game coming out here. Because it seems like that's going to be the strategy from Sweet Light Guys. Especially, you know, going up against this Chrono, uh, Chronos, who is struggling somewhat early on. Wretched Hag is also struggling. Haven't really been talking too much about Hag here as Loka. But, you know, ever since that uh, Mammoth especially that somewhat backfired. Again, she hasn't really been progressing the best. She does get a Grave Locket right there. But only farming about 180 gold per minute herself. So... Uh, and the situation right now, very reliant on this Pebbles once again. There we go with the portal key purchase from the side shop. But again, he does not have any mana items outside of the Steam Boot. So uh, he has the Steam Boot currently set to strength. But at this point, he can basically do one combo. And then he has to wait for at least a little bit of regen. Or even go back to the well to fully regen. So he uh, does need to be a little bit careful on that. Obviously, when it comes down to... Uh, Timing it. He actually sold his portal key that rebought it right there. Not sure what the deal was there. Um, it was maybe thinking about uh, trying something different, but in the end. He does purchase it, and he's going to start roaming around the jungle now. It looks like, if anything, actually may just. Oh, he's going to just stack the jungle right there. So, going to go back in perhaps and look to take something out. I'm not making the best use of his time right here at this point. I guess he might just do a lane pull here. But again, his, uh, his gold is kind of dwindling down a little bit as. Uh, the more time he waits. So and that, that's the other thing. I mean, the, the obvious statement of getting the portal key, there's no stats in the item. We've talked about this many times before. If you're just going to continue to just creep farm with it, is that the best choice of your resources? You know, probably not. But here we go. Here might be a chance to go for some kills because middle lane, a mass push going to be happening as that's an easy tower kill, and then they fall back. So they just wanted to quickly finish off that top or the middle tower even. And it looks like they're going to fall back from here somewhat, maybe. I mean, Master of Farms, he also has an Energizer, so a lot of team support items. Again, very push-oriented 
item build and hero composition for that matter coming out from uh, Sweet Light Guys. So they got the Astrolabe finished on Ophelia with the Ring of Sorcery, of course. Uh, the double energizer, as I talked about, we're definitely gonna have some interaction right here. Tempest on the front lines might not have been the smartest move. Carlos coming to the big Kronos field. There's the ultimate, the protective melody from Rhapsody in the background. Tempest is gonna stay alive. Poison burst comes out right there. It does hit a couple of heroes in the process, but the Legion team should be fine. It's Wretched Act jumping back in, actually. Bubbles deep in the master's call. Gonna be coming out right there for him. Four landing forward, a master of farms. No buyback from Ophelia, but they do burst down Bo or Wretched Hagger right there. And it was, is gonna be a one for one exchange. In the long run. Double damage on Master of Arms, by the way. So, that obviously coming into play. But, so that, uh, a lot of that had to do with uh, big ultimates being used. Specifically on the side of the Legion team. Uh, again, that's what they're very reliant on as far as team fights go. So, good job with that. The Gwyneth Field was actually a pretty good placement, too. You know, obviously a dangerous ability at times. you got to be careful not to catch your own teammates in it. But, I think he did a pretty good job of placing it. Making sure Tempest didn't get caught. And helping to save him, if anything. So, Good play coming out there. Oh, bottom lane. Master Farms, if he gets greedy, he is going to start falling back, though, and he should be fine. But, yeah, Pebbles was coming in with that portal key. Looking to maybe get a combo off, but uh, but not to be. Not to be. Or is it? Actually, Stalagmites is going to hit right here. Torture comes in with the chain reactions. Master Farms going to pop the Energizer, and they are going to be able to get the hell on out of there. In fact, he bottles up a hatred in the process. Kronos jumps in, but not much he's going to be able to do other than auto attacks. Kronos build is not up. Torture with the stun, but now Torture being chased out. One more auto attack. Wretched Act not going to be able to chase. So, again, very close to kill. Slither, where is he going? You do not want to go into that Conqueror Pit. That's a bad direction. He's going to be chucked in the air, and Slither will get picked off. Not sure what he was thinking, honestly. Balthazar just kind of got a little tunnel vision there and ended up getting picked off as a result. So not the uh, not the best communication coming out. And I think uh, Willow Keeper can be pretty satisfied with, with at least getting a uh, a Slither kill when, uh, when that whole fight uh, kind of slowed down there. So, yeah, Slither so definitely finding himself in an odd spot and did not work out for his sake. So going to be dead, dead right here. Um, he does have a quick play, so yeah, so they're not going to be going that icon build instead, of going for more of the more of the carry presence here. And I, 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 I don't know how I feel about that honestly. It, it seemed like this whole idea of um, grouping up, pushing as a team was is was already starting to work pretty well, and definitely could have been a good strategy to continue fire. with. And you know, such as the icon of the goddess build on a slither would definitely help uh, help that idea. So. I, yeah, I don't know how I ultimately feel about the Firebrand, especially, again, when you're going up with the likes of a Hag, a Kronos over here. Granted, their farm has continued to struggle, so that's, if anything, where this could still definitely work out, but uh, we'll see how it does ultimately. But Master of Farms, the Mighty Blade pickup, so he's going to be going for an early Shrunken Head, most likely. Can obviously be playing more of the utility as interest. Okay, so never mind. Slither, I'm going for more... Unless he's going for a Brutalizer, which would be a very odd item on Slither, especially for a first item, he's probably going to be going to Staff of the Master here. That actually, I do like. That actually, that, that does go along with the idea of, uh, you know, looking for grouping up and pushing out as a team. So, I think uh, that is the correct call, if that's what that ultimately turns out to be here, coming out from Slither. So, still a little bit of time, though, even if that is going to be the case. Bottom lane, you can tell they're, they're looking to push this tower. But we got Willow Keeper here, already ready to defend. Pebbles off to the side. Rhapsody going to be locked up. Will Pebbles jump in? No, it's just way too late. Bubbles jumped in, though. He gets a kill field out of Pebbles. Not the best kill field, though. As now Bubbles realizing, holy crap, this was a poor decision. He gets picked off right there. Poison spread out of Tempest in the background. Kronos field, it hits a couple right there. Pebbles in the meantime, going to the Master Roger's the side. The Tempest on the going to go off. Torture's going to be picked off right there. Slither's still alive, though. He gets a big poison first off. On many heroes, it's only a level 1, but still plenty of damage. Pebbles is going to eventually take down as a result. Kronos trying to finish out Master of Farms, and they will get that kill. But now Kronos and Tempest, they're the ones on the run. They will be fine when it's all said and done. You see Wretched Hag, he might be thinking about going back in, but no, not going to be the case. And that's how the fight will end. So definitely, again, both sides having a little bit of questionable decision making there. Uh, but in the end, a pretty even exchange, honestly. The fact that Slither and Ophelia lived here, uh, decent news for Sweet light guys, but definitely the bubbles dive. Uh, not the not the most heads up decision there, and kind of put them put himself and really force that fight to continue to happen as a result. So definitely a bit of a risky play right there. But in the end, the uh, like I said, it wasn't the worst case scenario by any means. Does someone make it work? You do see Slither right here. 
He's actually close to maybe getting picked off. They just placed a ward aside as he's running by, but no jump to follow, so he is going to be fine. Continue to look at the progression here on the GPM chart, especially. Uh, more so on the Legion side. Again, Kronos just really can't get him. Uh, you know, 280 gold for minutes, but it is going up. Wretched Hag's more so the one that can't find too much farm here in the end. Tempest is going to be picking up that Astrolabe for, uh, for his team. And then there's Pebbles as well. Again, this was a free farming short lane babysat Pebbles. He got the portal key, but really didn't make the most use of it right off the bat and hasn't really been able to get the most use out of it uh, so far. So, you know, his farm has also taken a hit as a result when it comes down to it. Now, Tempest is the lead in the way for his team, and it's actually up there with tops in the game. So I guess that's the that's the positive light here for Willow Keeper is the fact that Sweet Like Ice isn't, isn't uh, taking off by any means either. I love that Rhapsody. <laughs> That's a DJ Rhapsody with the disco in front of the music plays is pretty badass. Um, but yeah, Slither is getting him some more time now to eventually get that Staff of the Master, as well as having a level 2 ultimate is going to be huge. I mean, again, it's, it is it is one of those ultimates. Maybe it may seem a little underwhelming initially, but it adds up as the fight progresses on. He gets a good... If, if that was a level 2 poison burst with the Staff of the Master that last fight, I mean, I would not be surprised if it, it was close to a Genocide, if not a Genocide, honestly, in their favor. I mean, it, it could be a very, very powerful ability if you let it add up, especially with that Staff of the Master and the fact that it makes it lethal on top of that. So, uh, Mystic Vestments are definitely important here on the Legion side with that said. I'm taking a look, and looks like you got everyone but Pebbles and Rhapsody with one, so... That is good to see for their sake, and also good to see for them. You see Energizer just finished by Kronos, but look at what uh, Sweet Like Ice is going for. They they are grouped up once again, and they're going to make a point to push this bottom tower. This should be a free first tower kill. <laughs> don't think uh, don't think there's going to be too many issues here. As far as uh, killing this tower, I would find it hard to believe that Willow Keeper is going to do much to defend that, but if they keep going, of course, uh, the idea of resistance at the secondary tower wouldn't be out of the question. So there goes the bottom tower, 19 and a half minutes in. Still is a slight lead here for Willow Keeper with that set of both to go, that especially an experience, 6,400 experience lead. Definitely showing here Kronos and Tempest, actually. The most that are feeding off of that. Both level 13. We got level 11 as the highest here on the Hellborn side. So here comes that push, though, into the secondary tower. Another double damage rune on Master of Arms here, so that's good timing. And holy crap, this tower is just going to get melted. Disco Inferno goes down. You see they're doing a good job of spreading out of the background. Inferno Pity is going to be used right there. This tower, though, probably going to have a play. Nice down with the Minotaur in the background. No, it's not going to be a kill, though. It will be denied. Bubbles in the meantime, cutting them off, actually, back here with the Kelfield. Pebbles with the follow-up. Chronosfield hits a couple. Ophelia and Master of Arms are caught. Off to the side, though. Poison Burst going to be activated. No staff of the match, but level two. But the Tempest alter the poor man's portal key to combo. Not the best follow-up, though. Tempest is going to fall right there. And now here comes a turn from the Hellborn side. They do persevere, and they are going to make them pay. Pebbles down. Rhapsody dead. More kills are happening. They're going to lock down Kronos. He has a time leap. He gets it off barely in time. But that will be the end of the fight. Everyone stays alive here. Four sweet like guys. Ophelia with the Astrolabe and the Ophelia's touch level two, of course, doing wonders. And now they're going to start pushing to the base. So, yeah, uh, Willow Keeper, you know, you got to pick and choose your fights wisely, especially against a team like this. Again, the coordination wasn't 100% there. And despite a decent duration on that Tempest Ultimate, the follow-up just was not nearly enough. And nice deny again coming out, but, you know, that's just a very, very small victory in this whole war right now because you have the Rax that are going to end up falling right here. Ra Rhapsody's going to be running in, but what is she going to be able to do? Kronos has no Chronosphere, so he's not the most threatening. He denies the Rax even, but again, not a big deal. They're going to jump in, though. They're going to get some nice combos off. Down goes Slither, down goes Bubbles. So they will get a couple of hero kills here. Maybe even a third port back on a Torturer. He is going to be fine, actually. As Ophelia might, might uh, sacrifice herself, and it looks like that is very likely going to be the case. So Ophelia gets picked up as well. So they do get three hero kills, a double tap for Kronos. That is actually pretty positive for them. But the melee Rax is destroyed in favor of Sweet Light Guy. So, yeah, I, I don't know, though. I mean, honestly, again, you, you look at the, the stats right here, and it still is actually favoring now the Legion team with the way everything finished right there. So they are down one melee Rax now. But I think if you're if you're Willow Keeper, especially the way you got those three kills there at the end, no buybacks were needed. Yeah, no buybacks used at all either. Not too shabby. Kronos is actually starting to get built up here. He's looking at about 340 gold per minute right now. So 
Uh, so we like Ice needs to, needs to really pick and choose again. They're, they're pushing times very wisely here in the here in the near future because one slip up on a team fight and before you know it, Willowkeeper could actually start taking the lead quite quite impressively and it might be too too much to come back from, especially with the Lakin potential over here on the Legion side. So. Uh, it's going to be all about that. Staff of the Master, though, is finished on Slither. At least I saw him purchase it, I thought. I thought I saw the Glowstone. Um, as well as the Neophytes book, so... It should be coming out. Uh, maybe he just got the go Maybe he still needs the Neophytes book. But anyways, having that for the next fight, of course, going to be important. Master of Arms does have that shrunken head. Did he have that last fight? He did not, it looks like. It still has the full charges on it, so shrunken head going to be huge. Speaking of following pickups, though, uh, Wretched Hag does actually get the Light Brand here, so managing to pick that up. And then he got the Fire Brand, of course, picked up on Kronos, actually. Uh, I would definitely expect to see more of the Geometers being possibly coming out here for him. So we'll see what uh, what Kronos eventually evolves into, though. Again, Dombringer not out of the question either, or even a Frostburn for that matter. But the Light Brand choice on Wretched Hag. It is always, uh, as, as more recently, especially after, after the changes and whatnot, definitely more of a debate on whether or not that is uh, always the go-to option here. Um, again, in this case, they, they have a Kronos who is having a better time and definitely more carry potential uh, in the end. So, But at the same time, having a Grimoire, especially when you're very ult-reliant, as it looks like this Legion team is, with the Kronos field, the uh, the Tempest ultimate, and of course, a big Bat Blast on top of that. Having a level 3 Bat Blast with the Grimoire power is obviously a very, very powerful tool. So uh, I could definitely uh, respect that choice there as far as uh, as far as going the Light Brand decision into the eventual Grimoire, I'm sure. So there's the staff for the Master. Finish on a Slither. Tablet Command going to be picked up by Bubbles, actually. So no portal key on him, but does get the Tablet Command here. And the Tablet is a very strong tool to have against, uh, especially at Chrono, so... The Legion have destroyed. Can understand that uh, that choice there. Kronos though pushes the top lane and now he ports mid because they probably suspect maybe a Congor attempt coming out here. You do see Ward of Sight is eventually going to get countered, but uh, there we go with the Congor attempt. So we'll see how Willowkeeper looks to respond to this. I mean, ultimates are up, so you got to think that they they're going to look to at least make something happen here. Or I mean, unless they go now, this is going to be a Congor kill though. So, and I don't think they're going. Rhapsody is back at base regening, unfortunately. They just got the Shrunken out of Tempest, but they're just going to give it up. I mean, they had to know what was going on. Their boards were getting countered and whatnot. So, Congor is going to be killed. Token Alive, I think it's like they're deciding here on whether or not Master of Arms or Slither. They're just going to give it to Slither in the end. Definitely think uh, that's the better call. I mean, Master of Arms does have that Shrunken head for a little bit more survivability there. And Slither, you know. Definitely, you know, once he's the Poison's Burst, he's done a lot, but at the same time, comes back up, spreads more dot damage around. Or, sorry, spreads more dots around. <laughs> then, uh, definitely a good potential there as far as having the token of life. So, he's got the Staff of the Master again. He still has a level 2 ultimate, so, but still a lot of damage. The fact that now it's lethal, now on top of that, very good news for them. Middle Tower push is going to be successful. No resistance here. Coming out by our Legion team. You do see Kronos pushing the top lane in the meantime. He does have another 2,000 gold saved up, actually. So, uh, going to make sure he has buyback going into this next fight, possibly. Uh, speaking of that, Blessed Orb just picked up by Hag, so she does not have a buyback here. If it calls for it, Kronos is still pushing the top lane. In the meantime, no, he's actually ported back now, so the Legion team is ready to fight here. Let's see if they can find a jump now. Tablet of Command, by the way, also picked up on Ophelia. So speaking of the power of that item, especially this game. So going to play it pretty safe. I mean, the top lane is being pushed up by the Creep Wave. So how oh, boring, uh, sweet like guys. They will need to maybe address that if this takes a little bit too long. But still, they're going to do his thing with the wards. Geometer's being purchased by uh, Chrono. So again, he too does not have a buyback. They're really all in in this sense of making sure they win a fight right here. And this is very risky, especially against a token of life Slither. So we'll see if this pays off for them or not. They're doing their best to hold off, obviously, at the tower here. It is a level 16 Kronos now as well, so that Kronos we're going to last a total of 5 seconds here, even. So very
Very slow poke damage coming out here by uh, by our help one Sabah. So we like ice. Konos again, he's in those front lines. He's just taking out the Slither Wards as many as he can. So he's doing a good job of making sure to keep that harassment up. I mean, it does give a small bounty, of course. So you, know, you just want to feed it to it by any means, but... It's good for keeping this creepway push in. And in the end, I mean, I think our Hellborn team is pretty satisfied with uh, keeping things here. I mean, their base isn't being really pushed in anymore. And they still have about four minutes on that token of lives. So they're going to be very patient with this. Not really trying to force the issue. As I say that, they're all kind of up here at the tower right now. Kronos thinking about going in, but... Nope, just going to sit back and uh, continue to auto-attack the creep wave down. So, I mean, they're basically all running up to the hill, but no initiation coming out from either side. That's, that really shows you how both teams especially, I mean, really know, especially the Legion side. I mean, they know they're kind of old into the sense once again of not having the buybacks. They need their ultimates to synergize. They have to have that perfect initiation to make this work out. Torture is just sitting in the background. He's uh, waiting for a jump to possibly happen and maybe stun them out. Yeah, so oh, we have a vote to pause going to be coming out here. wonder if maybe uh, some DCs, because Ophelia is actually heading back to base right here. So might be uh, might be an issue popping up. But anyways, again, it, it, this is an interesting game, though, because you, you do look at the, the stats, and it, it suggests that uh, that Willow Keeper is actually in the lead right here as far as... Uh, as far as the golden experience, especially the experience. I mean, 11,000 experience lead, a 5,000 gold lead. Obviously, it suggests, again, that uh, Willow Keeper is definitely in the lead. But it kind of, at, at the same time, obviously, the pressure is being put on by Sweet Light Guys right here. Uh, by the way, Fistful, that is Archie Tiger. So, as you may notice in chat right there that we're talking about that. So, I, I didn't know that from before. That kind of just slipped my mind, though. But that is Archie Tiger. So, again, a name you definitely recognize. That's why I recognize the name Fistful. All right, so it looks like he has reconnected here again. Not the not the biggest deal in the world, but uh, it's about damn time. His creeps are off to the side right here. They should be fine. And yeah, back in we go. But it really, I mean, this fight right here is gonna just help determine this game because again, they got the Mayor Rax bottom lane to the Legion team or the Hellborn team, excuse me. And so, if they can manage to break through and, of course, get the racks, and that's going to put them in a definitely winning position. If they get held off right here, then they are going to be pretty far behind at that point. So, very crucial. Kronos is going to start to be bursted down. Rewind going off a little bit right there. He pops the Geometer Spain, and he quickly falls back. I like that play, though, by Sweet Light Guys. They didn't go all in right there, but now Master Farms, they're going to go all in. He's going to be jumped on. The Kronos field in the background. Master Farms gets the even the Master Call. He has struck it in as well. Bad Blast hits Slither. Slither is dropping. He does have to go to lock the tap. Is only going to lock it down. Slither is going to fall. Master of Arms will barely live. Slither comes back up. The poison burst is going off. And the Legion team is melting right here. Kronos in the background. He's just running back to the base. Just trying to stay alive. Rhapsody is dead though. Wretched Hag does eventually fall to the poison damage in the well. That is the strength right there. However, now Pebbles jumping in. They're going for a combo. Ophelia taking some good damage. But she will stay alive. Down goes Tempest. And Pebbles is now dropping. Kronos does jump in for one kill. Kill, but the damage has already been done. He's going to be locked down right here. He went a little too ballsy. This is going to be a kill on Kronos, and that could very likely do it right there. Hatchrick coming out for Bubbles. And again, another Bailey Rax going down. So, as I said, I mean, this fight was arguably going to determine the game at this point, and I'm pretty sure it did right there. Uh, looks like Sweet Light Guys is now in a tremendous spot. In fact, they're in the winning spot. GG well played. Game number one goes to Sweet Like Ice here in this best out of three series. So, I mean, that was a fun game. It really it really was a close one. Again, that, that fight right there, if if Willowkeeper was able to get their initiation off, get the ultimate synergy, then most certainly could have won that fight and definitely worked off of that with Kronos getting way too big, but wasn't to be. Sweet Like Ice did a great job of executing. They made sure to be spread out enough from the Kronosphere. And again, Master of Farms, even though he got jumped there by Pebbles, he got chucked back into the fight. He was able to get both his Shrunken and his Deep of the Master's Call off before more lockdown uh, attempted to be happening. And obviously it was a big part of him surviving and definitely helping his team win that fight and again win the game in the end. So well played right there by Sweet Light Guys. So again, they take game number one. That means uh, we're going to take a short break here as always, guys. And it looks like we're moving to game number two.